Okay, well, if many of you know that um, if you work around large machinery, uh, let's say large turbines, for instance, or large uh, web presses, uh, one of the first indications that something might be going wrong is vibration. Vibration is really an early indicator in a lot of types of machinery that you might be having problems. And the earlier you can detect it, the better. So that's why very often in a lot of plants, uh, they'll, they'll, have some of, uh, they'll have some of these mounted. This is a, uh, an accelerometer, a vibration uh, sensor, mounted on their equipment across the plant. And they might monitor these 24-7, monitoring them to see if the vibration goes beyond a certain point. If it does, it may send off an alarm, and maybe that piece of equipment will be brought down and examined, and uh, uh, any maintenance done or repairs done before the vibration gets to the point where it causes damage or perhaps even, even injury. Now, the thing about vibration sensors, and there's a variety of them, this is, happens to be a small one, they kind of come in all shape, shapes and sizes, is that they are precision pieces of measurement equipment. Therefore, they need to be calibrated. You want to make sure that the output of your vibration sensor is corresponds to the input of the vibration going in. Otherwise, you don't really know what you have coming out of it, right? So what we're going to look at today is a vibration calibrator. And if we switch over to our camera here, um, this is the model 9110D portable vibration calibrator from the Modal Shop. The Modal Shop is a, um, is a Cincinnati company that uh, does dynamic analysis, dynamic instrumentation, uh, acoustic analysis, vibration, uh, that type of thing, shock. And they also make these, uh, uh, what do they call them, uh, excitation stations, uh, or structural excitation stages, where uh, for structural analysis you might put a large kind of structure on this, and structural engineers would look at the impact of vibration on a large structure. Very important. So let's take a look at this piece of equipment right here. This is the portable vibration calibrator. You can see it's very simple. We got our uh, shaker stage over here on the left an amplitude uh, control, which just controls how fast, or I'm sorry, the, the, how strong a vibration we're getting into the sensor, the frequency of the vibration, that's this knob, and this knob over here is simply to control menu options. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do a calibration. So I'm going to take my sensor, I'm going to screw it into the shaker table, I'm going to be sure to use my backing wrench here. Now normally when you put a sensor in, you would use a torque wrench. It's always important to torque the sensor onto the device uh, using the recommended torque by the manufacturer. In our case, we're not going to worry about it because what we're doing here isn't really critical. Next thing, I'll just attach my, my signal cable from the sensor over into the input of the 9110, and we'll go ahead and power this up. I'm, the frequency button uh, frequency adjust also happens to be the power button. Once I power it up, I'm also going to install a flash memory stick because that's how we're going to get our data from the box back to our computer. I'll just go ahead and plug that in now. If I can do it the right way, there we go. Now, we're basically ready to start taking measurements. Now, you probably all have seen one of these. I'll hold this up to the camera. This happens to be the calibration certificate for this particular sensor. And on it is a little table. And I think we've got a slide of that table. On that table shows that this sensor has been calibrated uh, as part of its procedure to 19 different frequencies from 10 hertz to 10 kilohertz. And that's basically what we're going to do right now, kind of a shortened version of that calibration. So if we come back to our, uh, our 90, uh, 9110 here, you'll see on the left-hand corner here, I'm not sure if you can see it in your screen, we've got an adjustment for the amplitude. And I'm going to adjust this for 1G peak. Now, we do have the ability to uh, use other units. This happens to be G's peak, there's G's RMS, uh, meters per second squared, and probably half a dozen other type units. For this particular test, we're going to use G's peak. And I got my frequency adjust over here. I'm going to run this down to 10 hertz, because that is the first test frequency that they do when they're calibrating this unit. Now, you can see probably over here, you can see this is shaking up and down at 10 hertz. The output of the sensor is up here in the upper left. It's showing me 95.8 millivolts per G. I am now ready to capture that point. I simply come over here to my menu tool. I adjust, I put in save point, and I save the point. I'm now ready to go to my next frequency. That's all there is to it. I'm going to go to 30 hertz, save a point, 50 hertz, save a point. 
100 hertz, which also happens to be the reference frequency for this particular sensor and this particular test. Get it up to 100 hertz there. There we go. We dial that in. And I save that point, and so forth, all the way up to 10K. Now, once I'm done, I want to uh, save this particular test. So I'm going to go down here, and record. I press that. The record is now saved, all that data saved. I can optionally put in the model and the serial number for the sensor. I'm just going to skip that at this point. And that's all there is to it. This particular test is done. I can now move on to another sensor or another test, and we can go on from there. We can save up to 500 records, 500 tests, in the 9110 before we have to transfer the data out. So let's say at the end of the day, we've done all our calibration. We're ready to move on. We want to now collect all that data. So I'm going to go into my Tools menu. I'm going to select USB. First thing it's going to do, it's going to go out and it's going to uh, initialize and read my USB drive. Once it's done with that, I'm ready to transfer my data. I can say, move all my records. I'm going to click, select that. Now, all the data is now transferred from the 9110 into my flash drive. And there we go. So with the flash drive, all of the data from the 9110 is now stored in here in CSV format. Now, what I mean everything, I mean all the data points collected during the day for all the records, um, uh, all the uh, test parameters for the test, as well as information on the 9110 that was used to do that calibration. So on here is everything anybody needs to know about that particular test. All the points, all the data, date and time stamps, and the particular unit. I take this over to my laptop, I plug it in, it's a CSV file, I can open it up in Excel or any other program that reads CSV, I'm ready to go. But what's, what's really cool is uh, the Modal Shop has written a slick little Excel uh, macro. It's really simple, but it allows you to very easily create uh, a calibration record on any of those records if you want to do that. Or like I said, it's a CSV file, bring it into your own uh, calibration management software and do measurement analysis if that's what you need to do. That was it. That basically is the demo of how you use this to measure, uh, I'm sorry, to calibrate a device. But there's a couple other things I want to show you because I think these are particularly important. I'm going to go back into my tools menu. Go down here to options. Uh, obviously, I can set date and time for the machine. Uh, but calibration interval. Something pretty cool about what they've done here. Obviously, uh, calibration interval, I can set that to what I want by default. It's set to 12 months. Um, and I can change that if I want. But if I go, um, well, I'll show you something else here in a second. But what's, when, what's important about this is that a month before the calibration due date, any time you power up the 9110, it's going to tell you, you're due for calibration. Your calibration is a month out or whatever. So once you get within a month, you will be constantly reminded every time you power it up that you're getting close to your due date. So you should never have an excuse for skipping calibration on this. The other thing, this is uh, a NIST traceable calibrator. If I want to see all my NIST uh, traceability uh, data, I simply go to the traceability screen and I get a nice little display here that shows everything about my NIST traceability since the, uh, or uh, yeah, based on the last calibration for this device. Finally, we, tech, we talked about here that I was actually looking at an acceleration, uh, accelerometer. This is a piezo uh, piezoelectric device. Uh, Modal Shop uh, calls it an ICP. Others in the industry would call it an IEPE. We can also look at velocity transducers um, and also proximity sensors. There's a very cool little uh, device that mounts to this that also lets you calibrate proximity sensors. So pretty much any kind of uh, vibration calibration you need to do, you can do on this. By the way, battery operated. I'm running on battery right now. Up to 18 hours operation on a charge. What's nice about that and why this was designed is you can take this out to the shop floor. You can do your calibration on the shop floor. You no longer have to take your sensors out, send them out for cow, wait for them to come back. Meanwhile, your machine is down. Or you have to store a bunch of extra sensors so you can swap out your sensors when you send them out for cow. You simply take this out right to the shop floor, remove your sensor, calibrate it in a few minutes, you can plug it back in, really helping reduce the amount of machine downtime. So once again, this is the 9110 uh, portable vibration calibrator from the Modal Shop. By the way, we're really happy to get this. It isn't even on the market yet. We're one of the first to be able to demo this. And uh, thanks again to Modal Shop for sending it to us. As I said, due out next month.